good afternoon all i was uh, unfortunately a bit late but uh, i was still able to see the passionate pramod talking about the entire dpi dpg ecosystem and the way he inspires pretty much everyone right and uh, no wonder pramod everyone wants to listen to you and then we are also one of the few um, organizations which has benefited immensely from what pramod and team has done so i will talk about our own journey at infosys in terms of what we have done how we have leveraged but instead of directly talking about how we have leveraged the dpi dpg i'll just give you a little bit more context and talk specifically about how sunbird has helped us immensely uh, infosys is the world's largest corporate university i had learning for uh, infosys and uh, infosys is always known for corporate university uh, pramod himself was one of the first educators in the education and research team and people still remember him teaching uh, databases and everything uh, at infosys but the i i call this evolution of learning as an important element especially when we are looking at today uh, everything is centered around the disruptions that we are seeing whether it's ai metaverse and everything before but uh, the entire thing is tied around the skilling the lifelong learning and everything so in that sense while we call this learning 1.0 as physical ecosystem physical great campus wonderful educator uh, educators classroom infrastructure scheduled lessons and everything when nandan came back as chairman of infosys in 2017 uh, his vision was very simple he says we need to kind of break away from this thinking of intranet which is everything is behind a firewall everything is behind a secured kind of a network which means you are not really enabling people to have any additional way of accessing information when they are outside the infosys network so his message was very simple get into a anytime anywhere model of thinking and um, he gave us a directive saying how can you transform learning at infosys and that is where we got in touch with uh, pramod and sanjay prohit and uh, we were looking at developing few platforms even though we had our own internal digital learning platforms we were looking at actually fulfilling the vision or the 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 vision that nandan has painted for us and we actually encountered uh, the entire sunbird ecosystem or we actually saw the sunbird ecosystem in 2017 uh, october and we realized that you know this is very this is going to be very important foundational step in our journey to that learning 2.0 which is anytime anywhere uh, learning and what we learned at the time was obviously by the time uh, other was already successful we had leveraged promotes time many a times in terms of how do we think uh, big how do we think scale so the idea that we had was obviously we need to think big but you also need to start small and scale fast so this was a three simple words or three simple sentences if you look at it think big but start small but once you realize the success scale fast how do you do that so we leverage sunbird uh, then we built our own learning platform we call it lex at infosys and uh, that was the first uh, mobile first cloud first Uh, outside the intranet first internet app that we did at at infosys and uh, it was very well done by 15 developers leveraging the ecosystem or the sunbird um, the entire sunbird repository that we leveraged and then we built our own version on top of it that was learning 2.0 learning 3.0 was something where when covid uh, struck us we said you know we need to go beyond the physical boundaries we need to get into the metaverse the hybrid the virtual and uh, that is something that we are again uh, doing quite a bit of work uh, and again last one year everyone is talking about generative ai so now we are in what we call as a 4.0 version of learning where we are getting into human plus ai model of uh, adoption at infosys as a ai first learning where human plus ai driving hyper personalization at scale is what we are trying to accomplish so uh, let me talk about how did we use sunbird i think you already heard enough about the architectural principles and everything uh, the most important thing that we liked especially when we looked at sunbird was the the, the entire uh, extensible schema the modularized approach towards doing things and then how can we imagine i think sir uh, pramod talked about layered innovation or uh, have minimalistic approach but then have ability for the 
consumers to kind of build layered innovation on top of it, right? So that is what we did in terms of, we looked at this extensible schema and uh, Sham, who is going to be talking in one of the sessions, who is the chief architect of our platform, we have used that entire model to create our own uh, imagination on this, right? So for example, we have created a learning playlist, we have created learning goals, uh, we have created uh, knowledge boards, and everything is centered around how that extensible schema and the collection hierarchy is centered around. And with the same concept, we are able to kind of create many different capabilities, uh, just uh, leveraging the full value of that, uh, the schema plus the collection hierarchy and everything. The second one was observability. Uh, when, we were, when we were looking at doing this, we were already 250,000 employees at the time, now we are 330,000 employees. So we obviously need to have a good set of telemetry, good set of uh, uh, dashboards to make sure that we know our employees are learning, they are continuously getting skilled for the ever-changing future. And that is where we looked at observability and even looked into how do you build platforms with heartbeat telemetry in place so that you know essentially you can actually simulate, you can instantly look at what happened, how, how this entire uh, what you call uh, history of things have happened and we are able to reproduce uh, for sake of uh, um, what you call communication and other things. So observability and sunbird telemetry was something which has been powerful for us because pretty much everything on the platform drives the telemetry events and again using the observability dashboarding capability we are now kind of looking at giving an access to our entire leadership team and most of these dashboards, say we have only shown you a dashboard sample here, pretty much all the dashboards that are there are available for every leader for their units. And we also obviously have data privacy and uh, other elements in place. So observability and sunbird telemetry is another important thing that we leverage. We also looked at this entire uh, sunbird RC. Uh, we were looking at creating these credentials. Blockchain obviously was something we were leveraging, we were looking at implementing blockchain technologies for giving employees the certificates which are verifiable and everything. And at the same time, uh, we, we discussed with Nandan and uh, Pramod, and we realized that you know COVID, during COVID time, COVID certificates are already having this wonderful Sunbird RC being implemented. We said, why can't we leverage it? Why do we need to kind of pin, uh, pin on uh, blockchain capabilities when you have something which is open and uh, scalable architecture, right? So Sunbird RC is something that we have leveraged. So anytime any employee learns, completes the certification, it enforces, automatically gets issued uh, this verifiable credential. And the same thing now we have done in our Springboard platform, which I'll talk in a minute, which is our soci societal initiative. There again, uh, as a verifiable credential, we are leveraging it. I think already we would have done close to a million uh, Sunbird RC credentials within Infosys. Uh, so that's again the power of uh, the DPI, DPG ecosystem that Sunbird has provided us. Uh, while I gave you just few examples, we will talk about few more when Sham is going to talk in his uh, discussion in the panel. But I also want to say how a simple first step towards creating this wonderful anytime, anywhere platform ecosystem we created, it actually helped us to reimagine a lot of things, right? The platform we developed was a learning platform for Infosys, but once we started seeing the success and this concept of one code base and uh, everything, we were able to see how we can monetize that. The platform that we are using for ourselves suddenly became a platform, we call it Wingspan, which we started selling to client as a SaaS model. And we didn't really have to do much, right? It is already an existing platform which we have instantiated it with a multiple multi-tenancy model we were able to quickly imagine when clients came to us saying, you have this wonderful platform, why are you not actually providing this as a service to us? So we were able to imagine that and then immediately created Wingspan. We already have 50 plus clients for whom we are selling this as a service. And maybe this is also one of the first few uh, instances where Infosys actually started getting into a SaaS-based model, the subscription pricing models, which is not something you typically associate a service provider with, right? It is mostly time and material, human-based billing and everything. But this is one of the few examples which we started at Infosys where 
subscription model is something that we started to get into. Platform plus services as a uh, monetization uh, became an important uh, element in this. While with that, uh, the other thing that came out, and again, I will talk about it a little bit, even more in detail later, when, when Salil, our CEO, said, you know, we are already doing great for ourselves, we are supporting clients, what can we do for society? And that is when we said, why don't we use the same platform and create another uh, tenant or another instance and say we will do a free societal learning platform and we called it Springboard. And with an, uh, with an objective of supporting and enabling 10 million citizens all over the world with a wonderful platform with learning content, learning classes, uh, learning certifications, uh, internships, and then job. I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit. But the power of this is very easy. When, when I heard these first three words, as I said, think big, start small, and scale fast, in, in, in a matter of two years, we are able to have a platform for ourselves which 320,000 employees, 330,000 employees are using. We already have close to two million client employees using our platform. And now we have Springboard, we are where we are already having 8 million plus people using the same platform. I think right now what we are also doing, obviously we are looking into a lot of things that Sunbird team is doing along with AI for Bharat. Uh, we have also started dabbling into what we call again, Nandan wants us to become AI first in everything. Uh, as a company in the last nine months, we are already into what we call as becoming an AI first Infosys in which AI first learning is what I drive. And what we are also doing is obviously look into, when I talked about human plus AI driving hyper-personalization at scale, we said how do we leverage AI so that everyone, whether it's a learner, whether it's an educator, whether it's an administrator, whether it's a manager or leader, how do you harness the power of uh, that AI in, in three models? And I call them AI can help you with assisted intelligence, which means Human is still doing a lot more things, uh, but a lot of repeatable activities and everything can be taken over by AI. And then augmented intelligence is where AI is actually giving a lot more insights than just simple repetitive activities being uh, automated, but it is giving significant intelligence for humans to start uh, giving this hyper productivity in their, in their abilities. And finally, there are areas where it obviously will get into autonomous intelligence, uh, uh, where we are now working with the combining a self-driving technology uh, plus Gen AI, AI first learning, and trying to create an AI first tutor, which can walk around the campus, which can get into a room, teach as a tutor, or it can also become a facility manager or receptionist and everything. So we are actually having multiple use cases where we have this concept of digital pentagon, so anything that we do on AI now, obviously some of the DPI, DPG we are going to leverage, some of it we are building ourselves, but the idea is how do you improve experience, how do you innovate, then how do you accelerate based on whatever infra and uh, platforms that you have set up, and then finally how does it provide you with great insights and assure yourselves on becoming that AI first uh, as a story. Lastly, again, the societal impact, uh, we have benefited from Sunbird, so we also wanted to make sure that we also contribute. Pramod has been very clear that you should not only be the consumer of open source, you also have to be provided to open source. And uh, we also created um, a layer of Sunbird uh, learning platform of ours and put it as Eagle in uh, open source community. But on top of it, what we have done, as I said, with Infosys Springboard, we have now a platform which gives you close to 20,000 plus courses across technology, uh, life skills, everything for free uh, in India. And we said we will actually target three customers because we need to create a level playing field. Uh, unfortunately, while we are growing as a country and everything, there are still pockets of uh, uh, places as well as people who are not necessarily getting the best because everything also is commercialized. So we said we will target class six to class 12 community, higher education and lifelong professionals. And we said we are going to give them a level playing field with great content, great classes, internship programs, and all of that. So we are already seeing great success. We are partnering with 10 states in providing Springboard as a uh, way of making sure that quality education is imparted to all the state, uh, state sponsored and state governed educational institutions. We are working with educational institutions, universities directly 
where we are telling them, you know, you can put your entire curriculum in this. In fact, one of the things I, I like is with the multi-tenancy and the scalable architecture and platform in place, now we are telling every educational institution in India that if you want, Infosys will provide a tenancy for you and you can create your entire digital school or digital university or digital institute on our platform at no cost. So that is one of the important focus that, uh, uh, that we are doing. The good news is we already have close to seven and a half, uh, eight million people registered on the platform. There are two and a half million people actively learning on it. Close to 250 institutions are already using this platform. 30% of them are girl students. We just launched a program for girl students, which is Pragati Path to Future. So the idea is, again, we are benefiting from the communities. We are benefiting from a lot of NGO and the DPI and DPG ecosystem. This is our endeavor not only to give projects back to the open source community, but give a platform which is free, which is open in terms of access for everyone to leverage it, and we can create multiple models around that. So I have a few more slides, but I'll just stop here. Any questions, I ha if you have, I will be happy to answer. This one, if you can uh, uh, conduct uh, meetups, uh, weekend meetups, no, so yes, that uh, focus groups, uh, we can come and participate. I am from Bangalore only. We can always. We can, we uh, can connect. In fact, we would like the startup communities to use the platform for your own employee skilling. Uh, there is a job portal that we are creating in case you are looking at hiring. You can put your jobs on the platform, and you can discover students. Again, this is an idea of uh, Pramod, where if you put your jobs on Springboard you will have access to the 10 million plus students that we are aiming, where their skilling will automatically match to your job needs, and you can take tests on that platform, and everything, and everything is again free of cost, right? Yeah, to so continue outside the of dialogue, that, we can, uh, meetups are uh, really yeah, yeah, we, please, we can Techni connect. Technical meetups. Yes, we can, we can arrange that. The other important thing I forgot to say is whenever we are doing internships also, the goal that we have taken in these internships, this year we are going to do 10,000 free internships or internships for students. And the idea is every project that is going to be delivered out of internship will be an MIT license open source uh, uh, GitHub uh, project. So that is, again, the idea is create 1,000 plus powerful MIT projects in the GitHub that anyone can benefit from. Okay. Um, yeah. A very, very tactical question. Firstly, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, good to see what you presented. Very inspired. Um, very tactical question is that a lot of L&D teams, you know, within companies are, you know, people who came into the profession with a lot of passion. They're also very pained people, you know, because their scope is limited, budget is limited, uh, you know, they're so passionate about improving people's potential and all that. Um, I know like several such teams across Bangalore and other places. How can teams like that, people like that, you know, who are within companies who have acquired such deep expertise in training within those companies, how can they contribute um, you know, and no, in I mean fact, uh, to be frank, uh, that uh, that statement I would have accepted Sorry. maybe three years, four years back, where learning or any corporate function in that for that matter, right, is always considered as a back-end function. But the times have changed, right? Uh, in fact, Nandan says, whatever we as Infosys, for example, is taking to client, we should first be the first change adopter within the company. So when we are talking about talent skilling, when we are talking about providing talent, a learning department, will actually come into the center stage by telling how are we going to kind of transform the talent, right? So the back-end function is not really the back-end. It is actually more, it is right now in the forefront. It is actually a strategic function. So the problem also sometimes happens is it is in our mind that, you know, if we think we are constrained, people don't value us because we are a corporate function. We are not sales. We are not driving sales. That, can, that kind of thing can come in. But once you start showing the value, once you start generating the respective value for whichever uh, company it is, right? We are in a services organization. Even if you're in a manufacturing or retail industry, if you're able to show how learning department is able to create a value from a company's perspective, and that is realized by the leaders, you will have many opportunities. See, I, 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 when I moved into delivery, uh, learning, I was already into a delivery. But everyone said that's the end of the career within Infosys, right? You are only going to a back-end function. But uh, no one realized that we could create a learning platform being sold as a software as a service uh, 
and then also contribute to society, which is the passion that we have. So some of it is in the mind, some of it obviously in the corporate hierarchy, you will have the challenges, but the key is in terms of showcasing the value. I get it, yeah. Uh, no, this is very helpful. Also another question, is uh, Springboard and all the work that Infos is doing, does that fall under digitize digitization or does it fall under DPI? DPI, no, DPI. it is not fully DPI, but um, I would say it is an open access kind of ability that we are giving. Platform is free and uh, with, with the projects and internships and our, that we are now doing, we are aiming to kind of create open source projects which can contribute or extend the existing DPI setups that may be there. Okay, thank you. <laughs>